When we opened our newspapers one morning and saw the photographs of 14 young women who'd been murdered, we little thought that we would be in that position within two years. That was the Montreal massacre. And my daughter Nina was in her final year of school at that time, studying biochemistry. She was volunteering at McMaster in the emergency room and deciding whether to become an engineer or a doctor. Funds were developed and the request was that a garden be built and that would be dedicated to her because she had a love of gardening amongst other things. I was so pleased that there was agreement that it should not be de dedicated just to Nina. It was to be dedicated to all victims of violence. I think some of the things people are doing on campus to challenge gender-based violence includes a lot of community-based organizing and student-based activism. I think it's important, especially as we're starting to have conversations around how institutions or uh, structures can harm us, that we look to the spaces in which people from those communities are seeking out their needs and seeking out the support that they want. Gender-based violence affects students in very different ways. As a Muslim woman, uh, unfortunately, we see two, two, uh, two kinds of gender-based violence. We see the kind that comes from because of our race or our religion, our affiliation, and we see a kind that comes because of our gender uh, internally in our own communities and outside. And unfortunately, you see all of that hate and all of that violence and you wonder, are you next? Um, what's going to happen to you? I struggle every day. Should I put it on? Should I go out? I, am I going to be safe? How to make a woman of color to feel comfortable? We need to address the, the foundation of gender-based violence, which is um, sexism and racism and homophobia and classism and ableism. And we need to acknowledge that and recognize that in our supports and also in preventions rather than just looking at it as an individual phenomenon or a personal fault or looking to place blame and individually address harm. We need to also look at the broader conditions that create this culture and especially on university campuses where these injustices and conditions are almost amplified that we see them in greater detail because we're all kind of stuck together and we're all in this intimate community. If we don't know the past, we don't understand the present and we can't plan for the future. And that's why I think this memorial should and could and hopefully will serve as a constant reminder of where we're going in the future to achieve equality and compassion and caring and to remember those whom we've lost. And I think become maybe hopefully an enduring memorial, an enduring memory of a sad past, but of the work that's being done in the future.